do it again. I did, honeybee. Get it. When you were a young man, then you you weren't uh, using music for, uh, for most of your income or living. No, no, I was working on a plantation. What kind of work did you do? I picked cotton, I chopped cotton, I drove tractors, and I drove trucks, and uh -huh. I plowed the mules. I didn't get all of it. When did you start working? Um, I guess my mother carried me to see with pick cotton at the age of about eight. I had a little small sack about so long, and I was picking cotton. Why did you eventually decide to leave the South and, and move elsewhere? Oh, I, really, what I left the South for is to, to make records. I couldn't find no way to get to make records down. I couldn't get no connection, you know. Uh -huh. So everybody asked about it, well, they would give me a story, you know. So I said, well, I'm going to Chicago. I first went to St. Louis, you know. Stayed there a while, and I went back down. And, and then I, in 43, I, went, I came to Chicago, and well, my connection began there. Well, now, did you encounter any kind of uh, resistance on the part of people in Chicago towards the kind of music you were playing, that down-home style of music? Well, I got laughed at a lot, and, but finally I got a record on the market and, and started feeling into the field bigger and bigger. You know? How was it that you came to make those records? Uh, you mean with Chess? Yeah. Well, Chess had our talent scout. Out in, uh, he heard Sonny Land Slim play. Sonny Land Slim told him about me. So they got right in touch with me right away. Uh-huh. Well, you, you still had a day job in those days, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, I was working, driving a truck. Driving a truck, yeah. Beautiful little truck. Pick, uh, uh, I would deliver you know, parts for a Phoenician brine, you know. It wasn't no large truck. Man. So we finally put me on a big truck go on, I stuck with it. So you were working as a trucker when you cut those first sides for chess. Right. Now, when did you record those? 1946. Uh -huh. It was a little while after that that they came out, wasn't 47 it? 47 in uh, March. Uh -huh. What were those first two things that uh, you remember doing? I first cut a little animating gypsy woman, and Sunland cut two songs. We went right for another session. And I cut Feel Like Going Home and Can't Be Satisfied, and Sunland cut two songs again. Uh -huh. So uh, Andrew Till was, was just top man then. He done put out two true records on him before he'd finally let my thing go. You know. But he held back on the he release held back of yours. On the release of mine. But then he issued them and they became pretty successful for him, didn't they? Oh, uh, yeah. No sooner I hit the street, I got a phone call. He, he released it uh, on Friday evening. I think he released it 10,000 in Chicago on Friday evening. Saturday, 1 o'clock, you couldn't buy one. Really? Right. Sold that fast? Just huh? that fast. Well, and they were selling records then for, uh, I think, 79 cents. So, and, I, and they went up to dollar ten. I raised the price on it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an effect did the the success of that record have on your career in the clubs? Uh, it changed the whole story around. Uh -huh. When the record got out good, just hang a sign out there that said Metal playing, and it was full. But nowadays, I see that most of the places you, you play are largely to young, white college audiences. and. Uh, it's pr how long has it been since you played to black audiences, like the clubs that you started out in playing? It's been quite a while, Pete. Um, a few years. And I played the last year at a black club two weeks on the west side. And really, I didn't draw like I draw when I'm playing for the white kids. Uh -huh. When did you notice the, the, uh, the audiences changing like that? Down fifth or seven, I could feel like it was changing over a little bit. Um, as the youngster was growing up, they wanted get something fast, you know, and they love to dance. Uh -huh. Of course, I mean, I can play some fast stuff too, you know, but they didn't like my sound. They wanted something that, this hard rock stuff, you know. And uh, thanks to the Rolling Storm, they introduced me to the white kids in the United States. Of uh course, -huh. a lot of kids didn't know anything about my Waters until Rolling Storm came out and making my songs and putting on the back of the LP, the Muddy Water wrote this, and then, and then people wonder who was Muddy Waters. Uh -huh. So now your audiences now are, are largely uh, young white audiences. Uh, why is it that you feel that young black kids are not attracted to the kind of music that you play? 
I, there's several things I should say. Uh, maybe they think that if they play that kind of music, that's it's like slavery time, maybe. And maybe they think it's Uncle Tom or something. I don't know why they changed their mind on it, you know. Uh -huh. But it's, it's not enough for my black kids playing blues to keep them living, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, what, do you, what is it you think about the music that draws young white kids to it? Uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, groups like the Rolling Stones have that, turned them on to the music. Yeah, I, I think the white kids really love a sit, beautiful sound with that deep tone. And then if you, you have to put it on for the kids. You've got to sing to them, you know. And I think it's really love the way you've been hearing white kids sing the blues. But, uh, they can play all the blues. They can play no blues than I could ever dream of playing. But you know, they'll never be able to vocal like me. You know that. Mm -hmm. So I'm singing right out of the church and got that big tone. I guess this was white kids, you know, come to see me so often. Mm -hmm. Does it have something to do with uh, the feeling that... Uh, That's what I'm saying. That's a, that tone is the feeling. You got the feeling in there to these kids. You know? And there's no way that you can counterfeit that? You can't counterfeit that. You mean, in other words, uh, the young kids can learn to play a guitar that way, but they can't learn to sing that way? Like me? You mean white kids? Yeah. Oh, no. You know better than that. Why is that? <laughs> they, they ain't got enough soul, man. They ain't had enough hard time. 